Um, I guess I'll go first because that, you know, the, me leads to you. So, Alex, um, I met Retta, who had made a couple of shorts, but uh, hadn't made a feature length documentary. And he had this kind of idea. And I was like, honestly, at the time, I was like, what's not to love about that story? It's got like a sports angle. It's uh, it, at the time, like Leo was definitely going to go to the Olympics. So it was sort of a hard in and a hard out. And I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be a no brainer. Of course, this isn't easy. Cause like, I'm interested in telling stories that um, are intellectual, but it's nice when they come in a like sexy candy rappy, wrapping that is like accessible as opposed to a bunch of talking heads telling you like what's wrong with the world and how to feel about it. And so this had that thing. And then Leo is just like really compelling. And even though he wasn't super articulate when we first started filming because he was so in the journey, he just is an articulate person and a thoughtful person. Um, uh, and I thought, I want to talk about gender and I want to talk about rights and I want to talk about queerness and mainstream cult vis-a-vis -vis mainstream culture but I don't want to do it in like a didactic wait, way wait because Nicola are you part of the community oh wait <laughs> I am part of the community yeah I love talking about lesbians but <laughs> this wasn't that documentary uh yeah I mean I'm always sort of like I mean when I was younger I really struggled with with gender in lots of ways because I didn't you know see I'm quite old and so there weren't really any lesbians out there at all and that really mapped onto just thinking like oh well I must be a man and like I had a lot of body dysmorphia around that that sort of ma didn't manifest uh, uh, in in a transition but like it really made me think about gender and how constructed it is and so I spent you know, most of my life thinking about that. Well, Nicola will add a little bit more, maybe. I mean, like when I first started, like uh, Redder and I, he's a cis straight white dude. And I was like, well, I'm a fucking lesbian. So I get it. And I thought, oh, I get it. And I think there's a lot, there's a real tendency with um, gay culture to conflate trans identity with gay identity and or, or think of it as a sort of smaller subset of you know like we get it because it's like the same but like and then not to sort of address your own transphobia or see your own subjective take on it and say oh it's just like us coming out the closet i get it same thing and so we started getting into the edit room and that became really obvious that was a problem like we didn't totally and our sort of like sole educator on these topics was leo which is a completely inappropriate vehicle or vessel for be your subject or your participant is also the person who's gonna like help wake you up like that's not okay and so we realized that we had to need to have really frank candid conversations behind the scenes that were like um and you know involved in the cuts and like my lens on the film is noticeable. What are you going to do about that? And Alex is one of the most articulate, um, tactful, kind, gracious uh, people in telling you some home truths. And so he he brought his A game and we battled through it, not in an, in an, in an, in an antagonistic way but like we had some like really harsh conversations that I think me and Rada needed to hear and I will just say then how I came into this was that Nicola and Retta had that awareness and that want to tell this story in the best way possible that allowed us to collaborate together and so I give a lot of credit that, that when they were when they recognized that the, their lens was um, impeding the full ability to tell the story in a way that was going to appeal to the broadest communities and allow people to relate to Leo, like we were able to work through that and, and really earn each other's trust because I think there's, there's yeah, there, there's an idea that, um, you know, 
not focusing on what has been focused on around trans people is going to make a story less interesting. When in fact, I would argue that Leo's story is so much more interesting and compelling because of the things that are happening outside him and how he's contending with that and seeing the interior wrestle with the external, which is something that we don't just see with trans protagonists. So I was very excited because of what Nicola had described, this candy wrapper story. And how do we, all of us have to contend with what, what do we do when the external pressures to succeed in the ways that are really candy wrapper enticing, but aren't right for us? How do we, and, and that I think is a theme throughout the film. And I just think that Leo's story especially is compelling, not just for LGBTQ audiences, but for everyone, because we're all contending with these pressures of what does it look like to be and to succeed and watching Leo with the stakes as high as they are, choose himself is just extremely powerful. This story in particular shows how difficult it was for Leo to participate in a sport as himself and continue climbing, knowing that there was this misalignment happening. There is this falsehood uh, and mythology that trans people are taking over sports when in fact what's really happening is just that when you know about a trans athlete who is doing well that's those are the only times we hear about them but as we see in leo's journey he has he actually has to choose between the sport he loves and being himself and that is actually much more the case um, for trans athletes than a domination that is supposedly happening that is in fact not happening at all. And I think Nicola will, will also share about this, I think, because she sort of spoke to the different interrogations of gender that we all contend with or have, whether we're trans or not. But one of the real big issues in the broader sense is that when people are trying to identify or latch on to we shouldn't have trans people participating in sports, that's assuming we know who's trans. And it's uh, making a lot of assumptions based on physicality and appearance that aren't necessarily tied to gender identity. So who's really going to be affected are girls and women who are very heavily policed on gender presentation and so that's like expanding out into the world, but really looking at Leo's story, you know, his success was almost dependent on him not being himself. And looking at that from a new lens, I think is really compelling and interesting and hopefully um, deem mythologize I don't know it's like 110 degrees in New York right yeah, now. yeah yeah I'll let you take it from here Nicola I mean I think that when you um compete in professional sports you sign a compact with the binary system of gender and say I agree with it right like it's tacit but you do and then when you say privately even that I identify as a different gender or I'm not then everybody's like wait 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 you're contradicting yourself that doesn't make sense, you know? And so there is no place for you in that compact. And so like, if you want to get, and the anger that it engenders when you try to do that and people constantly trying to trip you up and say, oh, you know, and Leo was facing that really hostile reaction. And who wants to be in that space where it's like, well, in order to, in order to do the thing you love, you have to sign up for the thing you hate and then have everybody tell you how much you love the thing you hate or you're um, a hypocrite or uh, disingenuous or you're or trying to monetize some, you know, here when he says it in the doc, he says, you know, when he comes out as they, them, he's like, can you imagine if I came out as he? I mean, people's heads would explode. Like, how can you be a woman compete, you know? And so, and it isn't, that issue isn't about 
testosterone and levels and whatever. It's about trying to identify with what aligns to you and it contradicting what the world has made and the assumption that they're, they're only these two buckets. And if you don't fit in them, go away. Well, even if you do fit in them, go away. I mean, yeah. that is, that's what we're seeing with the legislation, right? Especially in the United States, but the rhetoric across the globe is like, no matter if you're a trans man or a trans woman, you can't go to any bathroom because you are like, that's just another place. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. It's just another place. Uh, and it's sort of like, oh, so now we're going to say um, sports are really only for cis people whose visual presentation and interior biology totally lines up with what we think. Because like, if you have a mustache, and you're like a really good at running and you happen to be running in women's sports, then suddenly there's a suspicion that like, well, are you intersex? Are you have high testosterone levels? Like it, it, the, the tyranny of gender is so intense around sports that who there's a, for a lot of people, especially skaters who there is another a- avenue, they don't want to be part of that. Mm. My favorite part of the documentary is the moments uh, or Leo's story are the moments of joy that he gets to experience when he is able to be himself. Um, And part of that is as a trans man myself, I don't see nearly enough stories that center around the joy in being who you are despite all the resistance and challenges that come and that's why I advocated very strongly for that Lady Gaga song to make it into the film because that is a moment for him uh, you can just it's not about physicality it's about being free and you see in his in his just expression, in the singing unabashedly, that is something that's relatable to most of us, regardless of gender. And so it's, a, it's being able to see and feel those feelings um, that I think a lot of people, if they really pay attention to themselves and attune to what feels good can relate to. And that is something trans people also experience but we rarely get to see it because it is much easier when people see our lives as not that. Yeah, and I think I brought my own um, sort of, I don't want to call it transphobia because that's a really intense word, but but I think I brought my own prejudice to the table around surgery because I remember when I went, it was like the middle of COVID and I flew out to Florida and I was going to go film it. And I was like, what is this really going to be? I mean, I know, I know, I know we need to get it, but like, it's like, it's surgery and it's uncomfortable and he's going to be all drugged up. And then when he came out of that surgery room and the first thing he said was like, let's put some gaga on. And the palpable joy that was in that car and the sense of freedom and liberation, I was like, oh my God, it's an amazing theme. Oh my God, it's really happening. It, it is so visceral that I felt like, oh yeah, why would this be a downer? Like, this is a great moment that should be celebrated that Leo got to do what he wanted. Um, And I think even beforehand, when we're like, it was like four in the morning, I was so tired and we're filming, getting ready to go to the hospital. And he's like, yeet the tea, let's go. And he's like making jokes and he's like giddy with excitement because it's something he wants. It's not like some sort of um, medicine that he's been forcing himself to take. It's something he wants that is... Is and then the proof in the pudding of the whole doc, like after Leo had really stepped into himself, he's just a much happier person, and that is so obvious. And I hope it's obvious in the doc. And I will say too that I think one thing that Nicola Retta and I re- and and our editor Sasha were really looking at too was like transitioning is so much more than physicality. You see his emotional journey become more happy. And I think that's, you know, in due part from our collaboration of really seeking out the many different angles of his life that are changing, mostly for the better when he's accepting and being able to be himself. Um, Well, Leo's really leaning into his music. And at the end of the documentary, that song you hear at the end is Leo singing. 
And so he's released that song on Spotify and he's, and I think, you know, he's got a board company and he doesn't need to compete anymore. Like, I mean, he, he's really um, manifested like a different identity away from competitions. And, you know, I don't think the doc's going to hurt all of those ventures. And I think that he is able to, um, I don't know how to put it, commodify himself without selling himself out, which is a really tricky balance when we do, when we commodify ourselves. I love the way you said that. And I think part of that too is this documentary provides a preservation of a certain period in his life that I know he's really excited to move past. Yeah, like, I think he now is when people want when people want to ask about his journey, he can say, watch the documentary. Yeah. Here's what I'm now interested in and looking forward to. And that can, I think, be such a relief to not have to go back and dig through this really emotional and difficult time that now exists you know, very, what I think beautifully on screen and in much part due to Nicola and Retta, that that can just exist. And now he can just exist. Can I just say something that I really want to do, which doesn't have to be in your piece at all, but I really want to give a shout out to Sasha Perry, who is our editor, who isn't on any of these, you know, calls or whatever, but they were really instrumental. I mean, Retta and I spent a lot of time with Sasha and their editing machine and they are non-binary and totally could articulate to I mean we're all really the three of us was like a real triangle of like vibe you know what I mean like in a really good way and I think um you know in the on the edit bay you see things as the director as the way it was presented to you and you don't necessarily see things the way that the either the trans community or the cis community is going to receive it. And Sasha was really helpful to say, yes, I know that's how that happened, but that's not how it reads in this documentary. It's a long answer, but I've got one. Um, I wanna say thank you to them because I feel like, you know, in a lot of ways as a um, cis woman, gay men really showed me how to be like you know a strong woman in a weird way you know and i think trans people have this moment to really show cis people how to be more complex and how to liberate themselves from the confines of like expectation and they're doing it out there and i think you know, gay people have done a lot of good things for straight people. I really think so. Like, you don't have to have a traditional marriage. It can look like this. And I think trans people are right at the precipice of doing that for cis people to say, look, you just, you, you don't need to just let it go, you know, whatever the expectations are. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm grateful that Alex and Leo have made me a welcome guest in the trans community. And I get to be one of the cool kids. Uh, I, yes, you are one of the cool kids for sure. Um, and I think we need that kind of allyship and support. Like we need that more than ever because it's never been more difficult to be a trans person because we are so hyper visible. And so for any young trans person who reads or listens, I would just say, you know who you are and it won't always feel so impossible 